and now for something different. Um, you may or may not know that I am a makeup artist. I trained in the mid 90s. I went to the um, Glaucorossi School of Makeup in London, which is also where Charlotte Tilbury went and Lisa Eldridge and very many other well-known makeup artists. I started working as a TV makeup artist in the UK, working on many different shows. I moved to Italy in 1999 and there wasn't so much TV work to do. I still did a few TV shows for the UK, especially TV shows based in Italy when they needed an Italian speaking makeup artist. But one of the first ones I did in Italy was an Andrea Bocelli concert, which was a great honour to work with him. And I've now been working here on the Amalfi Coast as a makeup artist on and off for the last 20 years, doing many, many weddings. And it has been absolutely amazing. It's a great job. I get to meet loads of lovely people and I get to work in the most amazing locations. Um, today I thought I would do a skincare video. <laughs> you, you thought I was going to say makeup. No, I'm going to do a skincare video to start off with. I'm going to go through the skincare that I use because I find these videos absolutely fascinating. Um, it's nice to get ideas from other people of what to use, what to not to use. But what you have to bear in mind is that everybody's skin is different. Everybody's skin is going to react differently to different products. Now, I am obviously over 40, so this is going to be an over 40 skincare let's call it over 40 skincare suggestions this is what i do every day now i didn't take skincare seriously for quite a long time i was one of those makeup wipes that'll do get off the makeup and shove some moisturizer on and then about six or seven years ago i suddenly woke up to the fact that my skin was not looking its best it was not in great condition and i needed to up my game and get better at looking after it so i did a lot of research the best advice i can give you if you want to learn about skincare is to go on to carolinehirons.com she is the british skincare goddess she knows everything everything i know i have learned more or less from her so Go there if you want to learn more. But now I'm going to go through what I use every day, show you some of the products I use and how I use them and how it's changed my skincare regime. So when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I wash my face. <laughs> Don't we all? Hopefully we all do that. My favourite morning cleanser is the Amorovixa more cream cleanser which I don't actually have at the moment. I had a tester and it lasted for absolutely ages and I absolutely loved it. It was like washing your face with clay every morning and it just felt really really cleansing but it was quite expensive so I didn't buy another one and I bought the Sunday Riley ceramic slip cleanser um, which was suggested as a similar one. It's very, very different. This is just more of a normal soapy cleanser, really, which is fine. But once it's finished, I'm going to treat myself to a bottle of the More Cream Cleanser. Then, after I've cleansed, I put on... <laughs> This is really bad. I, I, I'm I using this at the moment. This is the Vichy Mineral Ontanta Nova. Did I just say that in Italian? Min <laughs> the Vichy Mineral 89. Um, which is a um, fortifying and plumping daily booster. It's basically like a hyaluronic acid. I actually bought this for a friend's birthday and I was supposed to go to Capri. You might, some of you might follow Holly from Ristorante Michelangelo in Capri. It was her birthday and I was supposed to go to this amazing birthday party. This was the present that I bought her. And then when I got down to the port, all the ferries were cancelled and I couldn't get a boat to Capri. And I haven't seen her since. So I ended up opening this um, a month or two ago because I'd run out of hyaluronic acid. And I'm using it myself now. <laughs> Sorry, Holly. So I'm using that as a plumping skin booster first thing after I've cleansed. So what I have learned is the most important thing that you put on your face other than sunscreen, is serum. So, I, at the moment, I'm using, in the morning, I'm using the Ole Henriksen Truth Serum, which is a lovely, orangey-smelling vitamin C serum. I've had it a couple of times before, and that's what I'm using at the moment. Now, my main discovery in the last year, actually from November, is that up until November, I was always getting little breakouts and I'd always get a couple of pimples. Sometimes I get some really bad ones. Then I read a couple of articles about people that had stopped using moisturizing cream. And it got me thinking and I decided to experiment. And since November, I have not put moisturizing cream on my face at all. 
and I have had the clearest skin I've ever had in my life. So I don't know what it was in the moisturising creams because I've tried many, many different ones, but something in them was reacting with my skin. So the serum is the most important thing because the serum is where you're going to get all your vitamins and peptides and minerals and everything you need to feed your skin is in the serum. This is what I'm using instead of moisturising cream. I'm using Squalane. It is everything free. It's silicon free, it's fragrance free, sulfate free, paraben free, colorant free, free from drying alcohols, alcohol free, water free, mineral oil free, not tested on animals, vegan, 100% sustainable, and it is made from sugarcane. I use just three or four drops um, that's all you need to cover your face. I'm not using moisturizer and I'm using this and my skin is the best it's ever been. I absolutely love this. Next. See, it gets to the point where I don't like putting too many layers on my skin. Now, I know some people are gonna look at me and think, oh my God, you've already put three things on your skin. You're still going. Yeah, some people put up to 10 things on their skin. I don't, I'm not that extreme. Um, but yeah, look into Korean 10-step uh, skin routines. There's two more things. This is the By Terry Cellular Rose CC Serum. I love this and I will often use this instead of foundation. Often I can't be bothered to wear foundation. I think less is best, especially when it's really hot here in the summer. And I'll put some of this on because it just gives a nice glow to the skin. It's hydration, radiance, colour correction, and it comes in four different shades. Obviously, I'm very pale, so I've got one of the pale shades. White rose. It's just, it's just like a little luxury on my face. But, of course, the most important thing is sunscreen, especially here in Italy, where it's generally hot a lot. Now, sunscreen is something that can quite easily irritate your face and cause breakouts. That is usually down to the fact that you're not taking it off properly at the end of the night, so you have to make sure that you cleanse properly after you put sunscreen on. The sunscreen that I use, which I find doesn't break me out and doesn't create any problems, is by SkinCeuticals. They have two they have the tinted one, which is the one that I'm using at the moment, and they have the non-tinted one. These are both SPF 50 plus. I had this one given to me in tester form and I absolutely loved it. And then I went off to buy it and I ended up buying the tinted one thinking, hey, foundation and SPF all in one. But it's a completely different formula. This is slightly gritty. It's not gritty, but it doesn't feel smooth and it's very, very greasy. It doesn't break out my skin. I've been using this one and I'm determined to finish it off. I've nearly finished it. But if I could choose, I would go for the Ultra Facial Defense. This is Mineral Radiance Defense. The one I like is the Ultra Radiance Defense. It's a very, very light cream. It completely sinks in. Um, it's very, very comfortable to wear. So this is the one, the Ultra Facial Defense. That is what I put on my skin in the morning. After that, I normally shove on some makeup, but that's a whole other video that we'll do maybe another time if anybody actually watches this. Before we go to the evening, there's one more thing I'm gonna mention. For the last four years now, I have been using natural deodorant rather than chemical deodorant. I used to react to chemical, chemical deodorant. I used to use the Mitchum and it would sometimes, the glands under my armpits would swell up and become extremely painful. They'd become blocked from something, probably the aluminium in the deodorant. And, and also it never really worked that well on me. I mean, you put on deodorant when it's 35 degrees centigrade outside and then climb 500 steps, steps with a 15 kilo rucksack full of makeup and see whether your deodorant works. Mine didn't. I swapped to natural deodorant and it actually works for me. I've used two different ones. I've got the Schmitz and the Native. Can't get either of these in Italy. I actually can get this one online, but um, I have picked up these last time when I was in San Francisco last year, picked them up in Target. This was about $5. This one sells in Italy for 15 euro, I think. Um, so it's about three times the price here than it is in the States. I've nearly run out of this. I've got about that much left. And then I'm gonna to have to ask somebody from the States to send me some because this is the one that works. 
and I don't see why I should have to pay three times as much just because I live in Italy. I'm saving this one for the hot sunny days. So I'm using this one at the moment, which doesn't work as well, but it smells absolutely lovely and um, it's fine for the winter. The most important thing to know about the natural deodorant, which I think a lot of people find is they try it for a day or two and say, oh, it doesn't work, I'm not gonna use that. It takes two weeks to kick in. It doesn't start working immediately. I don't know whether it's a two week detox to get the chemical stuff out of your armpits or whether it takes two weeks for this to build up but whatever it is it takes two weeks for the natural deodorant to start working so if you're thinking about swapping from chemical to natural do it in the winter <laughs> because then nobody's going to notice you smelling so much okay evening skincare first thing i do in the evening and i do this as soon as i can when i get home is take everything off and i double cleanse i use the Bioderma. I use that to take off my makeup, especially my eye makeup. And I use these, um, rather than cotton pads, I'm using these bamboo reusable cotton pads. I bought them on Amazon. They, they're exactly the same as you would use a cotton pad, but you don't throw them away. You shove them in the washing machine and they wash up clean and you just keep reusing them. Once I've taken my makeup off with that, I then use the Emma Hardy Moringa Cleansing Balm, which I have finished at the moment. So I don't have any cleansing balm. I can't order it because it will take months and months. Um, so I'm doing without. So I'm using the Sunday Riley one that I showed you earlier. Times like these, what can you do? Anybody over the age of about 30, 35 should be using retinol if you want really good skin. I am very late to the game in this. I've only been using retinol for the last year. I'm not going to go into the whole process of why, how and what you should use because um, it's quite complicated and Carolyn Hirons can explain that to you. So please head over to her website. I'll leave the link to her website below in the description box. Uh, I started with the Sunday Riley Lunar Sleeping Oil. It's a very, very light dose of retinol and I use that every other night. Once I've finished that bottle, I've moved up a step to a slightly higher dose of retinol and I have gone with the Origins one. First of all, I use the Origins Plant Scription Anti-Aging Power Serum for the simple reason that when I went to buy the retinol, the woman in the shop recommended that I use this beforehand. So I thought, why not? And then I'm using the Plant Scription Retinol Night Moisturizer with Alpine Flower. This comes in a hermetically sealed tube that the air doesn't go into. You can't get testers of this because the tube is so expensive to produce that it's not worth them producing tubes for the testers. But the very important thing with when you're using retinol in the evenings, you have to use sunscreen in the daytime because it is light sensitive and it will make your face more sensitive to sunlight. I'm, I'm loving it. It hasn't caused me any problems. I haven't had any peeling with it. I will probably buy another tube once I've finished. I'm also using a retinol night cream on my neck and chest. And this is the Pry Ageless Throat and Decolleté Night Cream. The only reason I have this is because it was in the Marks and Spencer's Christmas Beauty Advent Calendar. It smells absolutely lovely. It's got that all over my nose and my lip. When I remember, I put it on all the way down here and hope that it stops me getting wrinkly. Now, every now and again, I will have a break from the retinol and I will use something else. I have this lovely little tester bottle that has got about two servings left in it, the Shiseido Ultimoon Power Infusing Concentrate Serum. This is expensive. This little tester came free with an order I did from Cult Beauty, which is an amazing beauty website. It's where I get most of my stuff because a lot of these products I can't buy anywhere near here. So I order them from Cult Beauty. I'm using that at the moment as a serum when I'm not using the Origins. And then I'll use a very, very simple, very natural face oil. Now this is Esther, more than beautiful. This is a Danish brand. I have met the lovely lady who makes this, Karen, um, reached out to me and came to Positano and she gave me the face oil and the body oil. They are 100% natural. This is the body oil. It's just a mix of four or five natural oils, including almond, argan and sunflower oil. It smells absolutely heavenly and I use this on my legs and my arms in the summer. And this is the face oil. It's just a very, very natural, nourishing face oil. And I will use that as a rest from the retinol every now and again. And that is my evening skincare routine.
this is what I use. Um, it works for me. It may not work for you. Just bear in mind that everybody's skin is different. For example, my best friend Celine is allergic to silicones. She can't use hardly any of this stuff. She could use the squalane actually. Celine, get that. Um, but she couldn't use a lot of it because um, silicon is such a big ingredient in skincare. So she has to be very careful what she uses. I hope you have found this interesting and possibly useful. I'll probably do a favourite makeup video sometime soon. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again in a few days.